In today's episode of Ghost Labs, we're unlocking your Sentinel ship's maneuverability. So let's break it down. Recently, I've spent a lot of energy on breaking down and testing Starship DPS. What works, what doesn't. But there's more to No Man's Sky than just fighting Sentinels, isn't there? Certainly combat mechanics have been a recent focus with last year's Sentinel update and the more recent Interceptor update. But what of exploration? Listen, if there's one thing I've learned from all the feedback here on the channel, it's that everyone plays No Man's Sky in their own way. So today, we're dedicating this one to all of our spacefaring brethren with a need for speed. Let's break down maneuverability. To start, let's talk about how your ship was generated into this simulation, focusing on maneuverability. Quick disclaimer, for most of this video essay, I'm excluding living ships. They have their own tech and their own upgrades, and though those upgrades do seem to run in parallel with other ships, I did not test to confirm. This video will be breaking down everything from core values, type and class bonuses, min-maxing upgrades, and testing maneuverability. So feel free to use the chapters list to navigate to the parts of the video that are most interesting to you, dear interlopers. Like everything else in No Man's Sky, your ship was procedurally generated. That is, created algorithmically, selecting at random from a set of manually defined rules, options, and assets. So let's talk core values. A ship's core value follows a tier system. This system defines a threshold wherein a ship of a certain type will have its attributes set. The tiers for maneuverability across all starships are as follows. Low, 192.5 to 250. Medium, 272.5 to 330. And high, 387.5 to 445. Now each starship type, shuttles, explorers, haulers, fighters, exotic, solar, and sentinel are put into one of those maneuverability tiers. So let's take a look at the ghost dart here. Now all sentinel ships upon procedural generation get a core maneuverability somewhere in the medium tier. That's 272.5 to 330. Now the dart's core value is 275.3, which is on the lower end than what it could have been. But you'll notice the dart's current maneuverability value is 468.6. Now that's a 70% boost over its core value, and that comes from class bonuses. Each class, C through S, will provide a stat bonus to your core value that compounds as you upgrade your ship. The bonuses for maneuverability are C class, 8 to 15 percent, B class, 20 to 30 percent, A class, 20 to 30 percent, and finally S class with 40 to 50 percent. Now, the dart has a 70 percent overall class bonus over its core value, even though the S class bonus is only 50 percent, and that's because a class bonus is given at each step during the upgrade and those bonuses are compounding. Still with me? Okay, good, because next we're going to figure out what exactly maneuverability means. Here's what we know. We know that upgrade modules affect change on specific stats that fall under the umbrella of maneuverability, namely fuel efficiency, boost speed, and maneuverability. My assumption is that the latter is a measure of your ability to steer your ship both while boosting and cruising, decreasing its turn radius. But let's stick a pin in that for now. We know that upgrade modules offer a boost to one or more of those categories. X-Class upgrade modules offering the highest stat boost in the game, but also the highest variability while rolling. So it's kind of a gamble. Now, as we perform these tests, I'll be referring to our ship, the Ghost Dart, in one of two states. First, organic. Now this means no upgrades, no tech installed, using only the native type and class bonuses inherent in the ship. 
2 upgraded. Now this is fully upgraded to include the X-Class upgrade modules, all crafted upgrades, three ship trails, and Artemis with Polo. Now you can see my hidden bonus video for more information on this. The craftable upgrades include the Photonics Core, which gives a 15% fuel efficiency, 15% boost, and 11% maneuverability bonus. The Flight Assist Override, which gives an 11% maneuverability bonus. The Instability Drive with a 34% fuel efficiency increase. The Sublight Amplifier offering a curious 30% pulse power upgrade. Now for our three X-Class upgrade modules, I use the min-max process highlighted in our how to max your DPS video that's linked above. Using this process, I was able to get three upgrade modules that gave us a 30% boost, a 25% increase to fuel efficiency, and a 19% increase to maneuverability though those are all in supercharged slots. So that comes out to 62% boost, 39% fuel efficiency, and 49% maneuverability. And that's for each module. I should also mention that I have Artemis Polo and three ship trails all adjacent to one another, giving us an additional bonus, which we'll cover later in the video. Overall, when it's all said and done, we'll see a total increase in boost of 201%. We'll see a total increase in fuel efficiency of 166%, an increase to maneuverability of 169%, and that curious pulse power still at 30%. Now, one thing I don't know is how these upgrade modules, both crafted and X-Class, how they're processed. Are they processed together as a unified bonus percentage? or they process individually from left to right, or so on. This could have a pretty big effect on how our overall stat bonus shakes out when we're done testing, but we'll look at the results. Now it's time to collect some data. So if you're following along at home, you'll want to make sure that any tech that can affect maneuverability has been stowed. After all, we're looking for an honest assessment of what your ship can do organically. Starting us off, Let's look at cruising and boosted speed. Now this speed actually has four measures. We have cruising speed and boosted speed, but also both of those on planet and off planet. So let's get into it. Now starting off with our organic on planet cruising speed, you see that we top off at 138 units per second. Similarly, our on planet boosted speed is topping off at 279 units per second. One side note, altitude greatly affects the speed of your ship. So for the sake of these tests, I'm trying to use the mountaintops as a point of reference for the altitude between tests. Moving on to off-planet cruising speed, you can see that we're topping out at 403 units per second. Now off planet boosted speed, we get a whopping 2,561 units per second. So what now? Let's throw our upgrades back in and see what we get. So on planet cruising speed, we see an increase to 151 units per second. Now this is about a 9.4% increase. You can see that I'm still at a pretty similar altitude. Now on planet boosting speed, however, is much greater. 516 units per second as an 84.9% increase to core values. Moving on to off planet cruising speed, we're still sitting at 403 units per second, so no bonus there. And off planet boosted speed, we see an increase to 2,735 units per second. That's a 6.7% increase. Now we can actually break this down a little further. In my hidden bonus video, I talk a little bit about Artemis and Polo and how they can affect the maneuverability stats. So if you're wondering if it's worth adding Artemis, Polo, and their three ship trails, 
you're really only getting about a 1.5% boost or 40 units per second boost from just having all of your upgrades included. So you be the judge. Moving on to Paul's fuel efficiency. My first thought here was to measure distance on a full tank, but that proved difficult to quantify exactly. So my new plan is to track the time it takes for fuel burn on a full tank and then burn fuel for that same duration after upgrading just to see the difference. So here we go. So with our organic build, no tech installed, we initiate our pulse drive or luminance engine and we can see our time to full burn is three minutes and 21 seconds or 3.33 minutes. Now, once we throw our upgrades back in, we can perform the same test. And we see that after 3.33 minutes or three minutes and 21 seconds, we're still at 84% fuel. That's only 25.6 tritium burned. So if you do the math, the time until full burn is 21.4 minutes and that's a 642% increase. That's pretty good. Lastly, we're looking at boosted and cruising maneuverability. Now this one was easy to show, but difficult to quantify. My first thought here was to calculate the arc of each turn using the length of the ship as reference for measuring the radius. And when turning in space and going into photo mode, we could push the camera to the absolute farthest distance to get the photo of the arc on which we were turning. Unfortunately, the only other thing in the picture we could use as reference was the ship. So you might be asking how we determine the length of the ship. Well, we measure it. Unfortunately, I was never able to view enough of the arc to model a circle on which it fell. So that was out. By the way, the ship's 11 units. After some reading and consulting a local expert, that's PS user Dwarf Paladin, I decided the only metric I had enough data to measure was rate of turn, or degree of heading change per second. This is a pretty simple calculation. Measure the time it takes to fly in a full circle, divide that time in seconds by 360. So after a few test flights, our baseline data looks like this. With our organic build, our cruising speed rate of turn was 50.06 degrees per second. That was a full 360 in 7.19 seconds. Now our organic boosted rate of turn was 40.86 degrees per second, making a full 360 in 8.81 seconds. Switching back over to our upgraded load, we check our cruising rate of turn and that's 55.21 degrees per second, or doing a full 360 in 6.52 seconds, and that's a 10% increase from our baseline. Finally, looking at upgraded boost rate of turn, we see 56.42 degrees per second, making a full 360 in 6.38 seconds, which is a total increase of 38%. Now, this stat's a little bit difficult to conceptualize. You figure the craft, as it gains speed, it gains velocity. Now, this craft would have mass in real life. We know the length of the craft, but not the weight itself. So you have to figure, while gaining speed and gaining velocity, you would be losing a bit of your turning radius. Here we see a gain, so we must be getting an additional bonus that's counteracting the velocity increase. But because we don't know the weight, we can't calculate that. So the best we can do is with what we've got, 38%. So that's it. In conclusion, what can we ascertain from this information? Well, if you're wondering whether or not you can skip Artemis, Polo, and your ship trails, I'd say that's probably pretty safe. But I will say, it does seem worth it to craft all of the upgrades for your ship, as well as getting as many X-Class upgrades as you can. Now, if you're a purist and prefer not to duplicate using the duplication glitch, which you can find linked above, I would say maybe stick to an S-Class upgrade module as you have a better chance of getting better stats. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, travelers. If so, leave me a like 
Give me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see next on Ghost Labs. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And as always, sweet Rift Walkers, I'll see you tonight. Yeah.